What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Crypto Blitz, your home for your crypto fix. I'm your host, Ripple Van Winkle. Hopefully, everyone's having an amazing Monday. All is well over here, down here in beautiful, beautiful Southwest Florida. Folks, in this video, we got a lot to talk about. Not only are we going to talk about XRP at its all-time high, we're going to tie into the Fed now and the connections that Ripple has in with the Fed now, and we're going to review what the Fed now is really about and what it means for digital assets moving forward. Going to give you an update on this Coinbase versus SEC lawsuit. We got some groundbreaking information coming out. Then we're going to tie this all into Ripple India. What's going on over there with the digital rupee? Sit back, relax. Let's jump into it. Bitcoin, $30,360. It's currently down about 1% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum, $1,883. It's down 1.79% in the past 24 hours. USDT is coming in at $1 as USDC still remains 99 cents as XRP. It's showing a little green. Up, up about a half a percent on the hourly, but still down 2.2% in the past 24 hours. Coming in at 0.484. That is 48 cents for those of you keeping track at home. 49 and a half cents. Heck, even 50 cents is where we need to break and hold above it. It's just not happening, but don't you worry. It will go down. Just a couple of months ago, we thought we were never getting out of that 30-cent range. And look at that. We almost did a 2x, folks. Total cryptocurrency market at $1.19 trillion. As the Bitcoin dollars is coming in at 49.5%. Where do we go from here? Time will obviously tell, but I think we're going to be flat just for a little bit. Just a little, maybe maybe a little down before we get the next push up. 40 to 42,000 is the target for Bitcoin by summer. Now I want to remember, remind you about this. Scavenger hunt. It's going down starting next week on this channel. Top price is $1,000. Second place and third place prizes to be announced. What's going to happen is during my YouTube videos, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, in each video, you will see a quick screen pop up like that, or maybe like this, or maybe like that. And you're going to need to keep track of the items or words or numbers and write them down. At the end of the week, you come back, you fill out the Google Sheets form. First person to put all the entries in is going to be the winner. Tuesday will probably be TikTok. Thursday will be somewhere on my website. There will be a clue hidden. You need to write down that clue. A little fun, a little game. Why not? What a great way to kick off July. XRP all-time high. Michael Branch put this out. It states, when the lawsuit ends, it won't hit 10,000, 1,000, 100, or even 50. It could reach a new all-time high, which is above $3.70, and we should all be more than satisfied. Here's a tweet from Crypto Asset Guy. I just want to make a little bit of a correction in here. All-time high was not $3.70. All-time high within the United States was about $2.80 or so. I believe once the lawsuit ends, we can definitely see that price. I would love to get to an all-time high before the Bitcoin bull run kicks off because then the $7 to $13 target that I am calling for, I am looking at, is going to play into this. Remember, the higher the price goes now before the lawsuit, the higher the price will be after the lawsuit. The higher the price at the lawsuit before the Bitcoin bull run and Bitcoin halving cycle kicks off, the higher the price we're going to go again. We have a 2017-2018 bull run to make up for. We have this bull run to make up for. Or to make gains for, I should say, because that hasn't happened yet. November is when the cycle starts to kick off and we start to see the bullish uptrends in the entire market. It's going to run all the way into 2024, folks. Q2, Q3. Right now, we're looking at Q2-ish mid-summer, end of summer for the blow-off top, but that could get extended out to Q3. The big catalyst for this is that we want to see these Bitcoin ETFs get approved, and we want to see these institutional connections jump on in. ISO 20022, let's do it. Huge Fed now announcement. U.S. Treasury Department of, Finance, of Fiscal Services joins Fed now. Listen to this video. It's only two minutes. It's quick. It goes over Fed now. It talks about the ISO 2002 compliance and that the network are a go. Remember, this platform is going live in July. Remember, Fed now is instant payments. The whole point of ISO 20022 was to make it so these domestic payment rails, the new systems, are all going to now be able to incorporate digital ledger technology and blockchains. If this rule or amendment, whatever you want to call it, was never passed, and these systems never would have updated or upgraded, but this is forcing their hands. Listen up. Some super big news for you. One of the biggest announcements in FedNow, and I want to say the biggest announcement since FedNow service itself was announced, just came out. 
the Federal Reserve announced the addition of multiple organizations to the Fed Now Service pilot program, new ones that are joining the Fed Now Service program. These participants, they're joining the already established 120 other organizations that are already in the program's testing phase, which began earlier this year and will continue until the launch of the Fed Now Service in 2023. And out of these new participants, one of them really stands out. Who? The U.S. Department of the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service. That's the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service. To me, this is the biggest announcement in FedNow since the announcement of the FedNow Service. Why? Well, think about it. Who is the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service? They are the government agency that, among many other things that they do, they provide the central payment services to the American public on behalf of government agencies. And they operate the federal government's collection and deposit system. Just how many payments are we talking about potentially here, Professor? Well, if we go look at some of the data available on the internet, you can go check this yourself in the Bureau of Fiscal Service, and we look at data through fiscal year 2021, the Bureau of Fiscal Service processed nearly 202 million EFTPS transactions valued at 3.56 trillion in tax revenue. They processed nearly 81.4 million transactions worth nearly 210 billion through pay.gov. They securely dispersed 1.7 billion payments, totaling more than 6.4 trillion, and they did it 100% of the time. <laughs> That's a lot of payments. Let me break this down for you a little more. If you get a federal government benefit payment like Social Security or an electronic funds tax payment system like, oh, I don't know, IRS tax returns, then you have benefited from a U.S. Department of Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service payment. Well, what's this really going to mean to you? As a financial institution, as a consumer, it's going to be huge. And the truth is, I can't say for sure because there's no official announcement that has been made by the Bureau as to what this will mean. But I predict, I believe this means that your bank and your credit union needs to get on the FedNow network, that it will enable you to be able to receive government payments like IRS returns, Social Security payments, or do you guys remember back those electronic impact payments? Those were distributed by the Bureau of Fiscal Service. Could you imagine if you could get them faster? Can you imagine what it means to the payments industry, let alone the country, to have the U.S. Treasury Bureau of Fiscal Service having the ability to distribute FedNow instant payments? Go from getting a payment in a day or two to getting it in seconds. Again, this is my opinion, but this is a game changer. And to me, it's the biggest announcement in the FedNow Service, or really in payments, Fed now serves folks. This is a big deal. Instant payments. Yes, you don't need a digital asset for instant payments, but you know what? If you want to start talking about instant settlements, you want to start talking about war, wall gardens, you want to start talking about bridging this money to get instant settlement, you're starting to look at it and you're starting to talk about digital assets, folks. We are already seeing the US dollar be tested and being backed by XRP in the island nations of Palau. Pay attention to this. Now we get this. Let's look at some connections in here. When we look who was involved, and I believe this is the right article pulled up, it's not. But I want you to think about for a second who was involved in this, okay? You have a bunch of Ripple partners. One of them that sticks out to me is Volante. Volante integrated their own processing module for XRP and for the XRP ledger, which they are tested up to Fed now. You know a lot of people... They used to work for Ripple and working on this Fed now payment as well. Interesting, folks. Very interesting. Let's get an update on this lawsuit going on with Coinbase. It says, maybe I've got it wrong. This is from Coinbase's lawyer. But as, as I reviewed a transcript of Binance's hearing, excuse me, this is between Binance and the SEC. It says, as I reviewed a Binance's hearing before Judge Jackson, since when does Rule 8 or 11 allow the party, let alone a government, to reserve identifying what exactly it claims to get past a motion to dismiss and into discovery? The court. The others that you say you're trading and that you're not saying are securities because you're not saying all the ones that are trading are securities, correct? SEC said, we at this time, your honor, we're reserving our right just given we're at the pleading stage, we have to get into discovery where we can make a full assessment. But our possession, our position, your honor, is that one of these coins are a security we've won. The court says, so I'm asking you, the ones that you are not putting in the securities categories, what are they? Are they commodities? The SEC responded with, we are not. Thank you, your honor. We are taking a position at this time. We are not at the pleading stage. We are trying to get past, you know, any potential motion to dismiss any satisfying Albertan under the rules. SEC counsel then says, so we have, we think, way more than is required under Rule 8. We gave the court and the parties notice as to, I think the number is 14 total tokens, including BRB, which is an issuer in the TRO. John Deaton sums this up for you. He goes, I call this. The Your Honor, we're reserving our right to call everything a security at a later date when we have a politically motivated reason to do so. Yeah, just like they had a politically motivated reason and a huge 
pile of money waiting for them, Bill Hinman, Jay Clayton, to label XRP as security because it was a threat to Ethereum and Bitcoin. Think about that for a second, folks. Ripple India. Ripple's powering top Indian bank's digital rupee project. Here's the article. Kodaka Mahindra Bank, a Ripple partner since 2018, is building out a e-rupee project. What is interesting about this is that we know about Ripple's connections into India. We know that Ashish Birla told us if you get three of the major banks in India on board, you already have about 70% of the Indian banks. If you have 70% folks, you're going to get all the banks because you're not going to just leave a couple behind. Those banks know that they will be obsolete or even be brought out, bought out or they won't be around anymore because they're not getting on to the latest and greatest. It's that simple. So what do we have here? A digital rupee. Who was looking for a job over in India to focus on central bank digital currencies? I'll tell you, Ripple. They were looking for a senior project manager for central banks, which was going to play a lead role in Ripple's engagement with central banks around the world, guiding the deployment of CBD projects and solutions. This job was in Ripple's office in Mumbai. Why do you think Ripple is looking for a central bank digital currency manager in India? Why do you think Ripple has partnered with Kodaka Mahindra Bank, who is building out a digital rupee? Everything is coming to fruition. All we got to do is give it a little time, folks. It's all getting there. We see the bigger picture. That is why we are here. We see the big picture here. We know where XRP is going. We know what XRP is going to do. We are seeing instant payment rails being developed. Instant payment. We're going to need to get instant settlement as well. Where a bridge asset, a neutral asset like XRP is going to play a role into all of these. I'm going to leave it like that. Listen, wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.